All right, guys, today I am flying the awesome Dragonfly. And kudos to whoever makes this for naming it the awesome Dragonfly because really you're killing you're killing it in terms of search terms, right? What, what quadcopter is that? It's the awesome one. Yeah, well, way to go. This is not a tricopter. It looks like a tricopter, doesn't it? But it is not. It is a Y4 configuration, which means that unlike a tricopter, which has a servo on the tail to make it swing left, right for yaw, this guy just has the same four motors that a quadcopter does, just it's stacked two of them on the back of each other. So we'll see, does this like handle like a tricopter, but without the, hey, I'm, I'm vlogging here. Do you mind? Chainsaw man? Honestly. Does it have like tricopter handling, whatever that is, without the old, uh, you know, without the complexity and reliability issues of a servo? Yeah. Mm. Oh, hey, did you hear that? You know who that is? Inactivity alarm. It's not Amber. I'm cheating on Amber. Alarm. I don't know who this woman is, but she's in my horse. Folks, this is the awesome Dragonfly, uh, and it is, it's a really cute little quad, I have to say. And by the way, it is a quad. It's not a tri. You can see one, two, three, four motors. So it's a Y4 configuration is what this is called. No servo on the back, and that is a good thing in terms of durability, and it's a good thing in terms of handling. This guy does not handle like a tricopter. Some people will say that's a bad thing. People who like the kind of swooshy feel of tricopter handling that comes from having a servo back there. But personally, I've always found tricopters really hard to tune and get to fly right. This guy handles, well, it handles pretty much like a little quad. Specs-wise, the flight controller is based on the Omnibus F3 target and it's paired with a 4-in-1 ESC. You can see they stack there. And another nice thing about them is that they've got these plug headers for the receiver and for all of the motors. So you could change a motor without being able to solder. Now, if you don't know how to solder in this hobby, you're not going to get very far for very long. But if you're looking for one that you can change a motor or change a flight controller or an ESC without having to solder, I guess this will do you. The camera looks a lot like a Swift Micro, but it's not. It is a generic, it says on the back, 
FPV camera. But I will, I was really impressed. I, I don't expect much from these no-name cameras. I was really impressed with the image. You can see in the DVR footage for yourself. I thought it was a pretty decent, pretty solid image, all things being said. <laughs> Somewhere out there, someone from Armitan is going to file a trademark suit against Awesome because that... It looks a lot like the Armitan logo, doesn't it? Moving on, uh, the motors are 1105 7000 kV, and it, uh, it feels to me like they're letting the quad down a little bit. The quad struggles sometimes, uh, especially on sharp yaw moves. It, it really struggles, and it feels like the motors might be just a little bit overpropped on these props. The motors in the back being stacked like this does make it a little hard to put the bottom prop on. What I ended up doing was actually sort of sticking it on the shaft and then just squeezing down with the top motor to press it on. Uh, and then getting the screws in is also tricky. You can see, of course, you can't get a screwdriver in there. I had to just kind of push it to the side like that. And it's actually, you could probably tighten it up. I can feel that it's pretty loose there. Um, yeah, you can actually see that the screw has backed out a little bit. That might have happened when I was flying. So... I guess you're going to want to check that pretty regularly to see that it stays tight. Um, it might be some concern about these guys like smacking down as well. I'm not sure if that's going to ever happen in a flight because this is going to be pushing up and I don't know. But um, yeah, it certainly is a possibility. Here's the bottom line uh, about the awesome Dragonfly, though, and it's why this review has been relatively short. It's because I think that the reason you're going to buy this quad doesn't have anything to do with with its specs or its performance. It, it was fun to fly. It didn't fly great. You could probably tune it up a little bit, maybe improve the props. I've, I've had good results with these props, but you could probably make it fly a little better. But I, I feel like at a price of 139 bucks, which is what this runs, you know what else is 139 bucks? That is Baby Hawk R. This is a beast, a freaking beast. And if you put 2.5 inch arms on it, so I'm told, it becomes even more of a beast. This guy is just in hands down a better quadcopter than the Dragonfly. It flies better, it's faster, it handles better, and again, you can add the 2.5 inch arms and get a little more versatility out of it as well. This guy is okay. It, at a price of 100 bucks, maybe 110 bucks, it might be more compelling. But at a price of 139 bucks, I feel like there's other things out there. But if you're looking at it right now and going, "No, I want that. <laughs> I want that. Look at that cute little thing. I want the. I want the. I want the tricopter. That's not a tricopter. Well, you know, it's okay. It gets the job done. Uh, it's not the worst thing in the world. And, and that if you're gonna buy it, that's why you're gonna buy it because you just look at it and you think it's super cute. Um, it didn't have any like major. Didn't like disappoint me in any way seriously um comes with beta flight like 317 so you're gonna want to upgrade that but nothing's really wrong with it just i think there's better stuff out there for the money but this is what they're not they're not y4 so hey y4 yeah there you go that's gonna do it for this review folks thank you guys so much for watching leave any questions down in the comment section as always happy flying